they say that lard is making a comeback, but I say it never really went away. Jack's here and he's gonna tell us all about lard and which one we should buy. I know when I think like who would be president of the I Love Lard Club? Bridget. Who would be? Who is? <laughs> <laughs> so this tasting was designed for you. These are beautiful cat head biscuits, mm. southern recipe that are big biscuits made with lard. Lard has gotten a bad rap. If you go back 100 years ago, the average American was consuming 14 pounds of lard a year. We're now under two pounds. Crisco ended up basically being marketed as, because it wasn't an animal product, it was vegetable, as the healthy alternative. It now turns out all that science has basically been debunked. And I'm not gonna make an argument that lard is health food, but lard is probably better than shortening. Now, there was a range of flavors. Think about all of the uses for lard. And so that's everything from frying pork for carnitas mm -hmm. to making strawberry rhubarb pie, in which case actually a porky lard, most people would say no thank you. The big advantage I think of lard is the texture. Because its melting point is considerably higher than butter, it stays solid longer in the oven. Right. And so you get more flakiness, more tenderness. And basically the results of the tasting follow the melting point. The higher the melting point, the better it did in the biscuit test. And so that was a key factor. And that's basically how it's processed. Slow cooking, slow heating, slow cooling gives you this nice crystal structure that then melts slowly. The other thing about using lard as opposed to butter is that it's 100% fat. Butter is 20% water, 80% fat roughly. All of that water can activate gluten in the flour. And so lard, when you're using it in biscuits or in pie dough, as opposed to butter, you just get incredible tenderness. Mm -hmm. The top rated brands that we liked the most were the ones that were not hydrogenated. Okay. That said, there were several that were hydrogenated that did well, but that had the higher melting point. And that basically the combination of hydrogenation and a low melting point ended up pushing the brands to the bottom of the rankings. Anything that's jumping out at you? I would say that this one is the most tender. It feels moister as well. You know, I would be really happy with any of these. I would say, I mean, I love the crust on this one. I'm trying to get away from the, the visuals and, and everything, but mm, I'm gonna pick this one. I think it has more flavor. I think that was probably the one that people liked the least because it has more flavor to me. So this is the porkiest. It was actually at the bottom of really? the rankings. It's armor. Remember, they're all recommended. Right. We loved all of these lards. You're um, being very kind. Uh, yes. So, That's a good cooking lard. Maybe not great yeah. for baking. Um, well, if you want a, an apple pie sure. that has notes of bacon, mm -hmm. which I think Who doesn't? you want notes of bacon and everything. Just lose the apple. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And then this one. That's the John Morrell. The favorite supermarket option. Some of these are only mail order. Lard is now so hip and cool that people are actually mail ordering lard from uh, super high-end premium lard farms. We felt like, well, we should also be really clear about what's what are the supermarket options. I gotcha. Uh, and this so, one I thought was the most tender. So this was the favorite overall for the expert panel. The studio audience loved this as well. It's US Dreams. Mm -hmm. It's a mail order only brand. It has the highest melting point of any of them, which made it very tender. You were having trouble here because honestly, you loved them all. I kind of do. Well, there you go. Our winner was US Dreams Lard. It's $11.99 for a pound, or you can go with the supermarket Best Buy option. And that's $1.69 for a pound of John Morrell Snowcap. Big difference in price. <laughs>